Call the donkey from its placey, its hands a queen of spades, she shears with frothy blades, then F U R N A C. I'd liken to some poker face, but mirrors are mirroring you, at least from this point of view. It's almost done. All that's left is a name, and my space rock opera will be fully realized. I'm thinking Mobius strip poker of the parallax donkeys. I'm still not sure how to explain the love interest reproducing in low gravity, but that's a problem for NASA and Pitchfork to collaborate on. Oh, right. You might be wondering what the difference between a concept album and a normal one is. Albums are often just a collection of songs with a few threads sewn in. Maybe they're made around the same time frame or with a central idea in mind. But depending on how far you bend this meter, you can end up in something called high concept territory. Arcing narratives, extensive callbacks, hell, even just a common point of inspiration would fall under this umbrella. Somewhere towards the middle is a zone of perplexing halflings that show signs of being a concept album in the same way two sponges, one glove, and a Pringles can might show signs of being a caring partner. But where's the line between almost a concept and actually a concept? Well, I, yeah, uh, let me phone a friend. That doesn't mean it's okay, but I, yes, I did read the genius page. Okay, listen, all I want to know is whether you're a concept album or not. I'm not really interested in telling you about things with zero or non-zero concepts. There's a lot of records I adore here, but I'm not going to sketch out a crime board of their writing. I mean, I couldn't if I tried. I ran out of space three crime boards ago. There's a rich history here to unravel, so Sergeant Pep... Um, okay. So the kinks... Really? Um, okay. So, um, song cycles? So it all started back in the year... Let's talk about what I like. Quick pitches. Food, seasons, virginity, anything you can explain in a single sentence across every track. 50 Song Memoir is a year-by-year -year abstraction of the life of magnetic field songwriter Stephen Merritt. Each song represents that era's taste in instruments, subject matter, and whatever Merritt was influenced by at the time. When he was my age, Merritt was singing about video games, viruses, Russia. It was a different time. They also made 69 love songs. It's, well, love lost, found, denied, demanded, regretted, appreciated, missed, avoided, remembered, forgotten, misinterpreted, oblivion. In this one, he really wants a zebra. Aw, he names it Zelda. I can't play you these tracks, so much like a concept album, this video might have required reading to it. This song right here? I don't want to brag, but I only cried once to it. I is another album about I. I die, I born, I love, I leave, I start crying I'm like, this one. CAs are pretty associated with narratives, a start, middle, and end point. I think credits do for the less is more approach sometimes, though. Ooh, Up Montreal has this album where each title tells the story of Dustin Hoffman taking a bath, eating the soap, stealing the bathtub, and then climbing a tree. I don't even relate to the songs or lyrics at all. Don't care, concept album. The use of conceptualized storytelling goes hand in hand with probably any metal or prog band you could name. Mastodon, Opeth, Mars Volta, I don't know, Elo, Pink Flo- These genres aren't totally my forte. Uh, Unleash the Archers made this one thing called Apex. It's the start of a multi-album story of the immortal, cursed to serve whomever awakens him, but this time when he awakens in the mountain, which is his home, he follows a falcon, which is a falcon to the matriarch, which is his enemy, but not at the start, who tasks him to find her sons, and then there's this war with 10,000- no, wait, I skipped a page. Uh, he goes to space in the second one. These genres are often something of a melodic audiobook if it was read by lizard folk with perfect pitch. An album based on the lore of Warhammer, an afterlife journey across the five stages of grief. Ones based on books, ones that inspired books, ones and twos and nines and tens! The Armory Wars, you knew I was gonna mention it. A sci-fi comic series detailing the plot of nearly every Coheed and Cambria album ever made. It's not a small number of releases either, folks. Their logo is a map detailing the travel of energy between in-universe planets. I just thought it was like an Ouroboros. Blade Wolf. Bl Sorry, my dog wants to go outside. Hey, buddy, you want to go for a walk? You know, this looks so much bigger for my apartment. Back to the point, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Their work includes quarters, a collage of four equal length jazz prog tracks. Flying Microtonal Banana, it's psych rock written on instruments with extra frets to utilize what's, uh, how do you say, tones between tones. You see, microtonality is prominent in a lot of... Rattlesnake! Rattlesnake! 
The lore of Gizverse is what happens when you put a can of alphabet soup on a power drill and say whatever hits the wall is canon. What? That doesn't count! I used it in a sentence! Nonagon Infinity, a never-ending song spanning across nine tracks before looping back to the start. It connects back to the larger Gizverse, probably, but all you need to know is to wait for the answer to open the door. Alright? Cause Nonagon Infinity opens the door- there's lots of fun time-related motifs occurring throughout the album. Mr. Beat, I gather, runs in 7-4 times, switching to 8-4 every fourth measure, a literal missed beat. It's as meta-referential as it is confusing. This album once looped infinitely on a dedicated website, and even got turned into an indie video game demo. Each song connected to a different level in genre. Super Meat Boy, Wolfenstein, even Zelda. This game is gone now, but the album itself is still great. I really love this idea of a loop- oh, Hold on. Blade Wolf- Bla Sorry, my dog wants to go outside. Hey buddy, you wanna go for a walk? You know, this looks so much bigger for my apartment. One Long Song is a pretty common album concept. It's usually more for drone and ambient sounds. I... I don't get it, is this the chorus? But my favorite one of these might be Anatolia by Feed Me Jack. There's lay motifs, recurring themes, seamless transitions. On the surface, each track is so distinct you might not notice it's an interconnected album. You might even think I'm making a stretch here. But they said this in an interview once, so I win the argument. The way open transitions into a... Da 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 is like the audio equivalent of catching a CD with your Wii after a hundred tries. Alright, here it comes. Damn it. Damn it. It's lower than you think. Funk. Alright, I can't do it, but you get my point. Whatever, I'm gonna go sleep this off. Me, 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 me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> I just had a, the craziest dream. I was on a pirate ship at sea fighting a serpent in the sun, but the ship was a lawnmower and the serpent was a garden hose, and the sea was a Windows 95 wallpaper. The sun wasn't a metaphor, it was just the sun. <sighs> My dreams are really allegorical. Which might be why I love the album Black Foliage so much. Built off liminal field recordings, real-life recollections of dreams, and a whole lot of kick-ass music, this thing lays the unawakened mind bare into a soundtrack of machines chugging, planes reaching boundaries. It's like a soundtrack for closing your eyes and imagining a world of. Unless you have aphantasia, in which case, uh, look at this apple. Like real dreams, the absurdity surrounds occasional nuggets of meaningful insight. Don't hide from your aspirations. Even things out of sight continue to exist and change. California is overrated. No disagreements there. Every moment of this collage of sound was made to convey life moving, neurons firing. It may be my personal definitive concept album. It parallels that otherworldly big band feel of something like... of something like... <laughs> Pet Sounds. Across the track list, you'll find these self-titled tracks dubbed Animation Music. I believe these were designed to accompany visual animatics, but no animations were ever actually produced. In a way, this concept remains unfinished, stuck in a Bardo-like state of interpretation without explanation. Ironically, this is an exact state the songs themselves were made to place you in. Maybe one day those animatics will be created. Maybe not. Maybe the true animatic is whatever you observe each night as your ego drips between the jutted bark floors where conscious boundaries the unconscious. A nucleus diving into its neural forest like mycelium roots before floating back into the man of war form that we call you. Or, maybe I just didn't feel like animating it.